superheroes come in all shapes and sizes. They don't always meet in an underground fortress. Sometimes they meet in places that appear to be very ordinary to most people. But inside, there are heroes in training. Some are smart, strong, or brave. Maybe they can build cities or heal people when they get hurt. But even superheroes need some help sometimes. With your support, we can change the world. Together, we are a force that can't be defeated. Support the club, save the world. Support your local superheroes and donate now to the Boys and Girls Club of Noblesville at bgcni.org. provider and ask a question when you need it. I feel like when I'm meeting with a community nurse practitioner or doctor, they're tuned in to what is going on with me and the way that they can serve me best. Blades Audio Video Security is Indiana's premier K-12 audio video and security provider. Blades is a design-built firm that provides high-quality solutions that are designed, engineered, installed, and warranted by our team of experts. For 18 years, we've helped schools and local businesses see and hear more clearly. Whether it's your sound system, your displays, your network, or your building security. Ask how our experienced team can serve you. Salt, maybe a large vanilla shake. Yeah. This is a trophy shop, can't you tell? You got a counter right here. Isn't this where you place the orders? We sell trophies, we sell plaques, we do embroidery. No food. You got carry out? Unlike the internet, everything that you need we have here at the shop. Very unique. You order today, carry out tonight, that's our version of carry out. All right, I'll take one of everything. Well, that may take a little longer. We'll have it for you tomorrow night. You know, Jim, I'll be back tomorrow to pick it all up. We'll wait for you. Don't wait long. <laughs> Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to tonight's broadcast of IHSAA Softball on Hamilton County Television. 
presented by Logan Street Signs and Banners with over 30 years in business. We'd also like to thank our other great sponsors, Noblesville Trophies, Gaylor Electric, Chuck Goodrich, President and CEO, Community Health Network, visit HamiltonCounty.com, Hamilton County Sports Authority, Blades, Audio, Video, and Security, the Hamilton County Reporter, Sarah Cleverly of SC Tucker Real Estate and the Noblesville Youth Sports Alliance. I'm Brad Silbert along with Perry Williams. We're going to turn things over to public address announcer Rich Harden for the opening festivities. Batting eighth in center field, number two, Hannah Bull. Batting ninth in left field, number five, Micah Wright. And the flex player, pitching number 20, Ryland Gick. Head coach for the Raiders is Kelsey Clark. And now, introducing the starting lineup for the home team, your Noblesville Millers. Leading off in center field, number one, Delaney Rundle. Batting second, number two, in left field, Nevea Nash. Batting yeah. third at shortstop, number 16, Gabby Fowler. Yeah. Batting fifth, length third base, number 21, Chloe Better. Batting six, in right field, number 14, Michaela Jackaway. Batting seventh, and catching, number 10, Haley Shatko. Batting eighth, that's second base, number seven, Addie Emerson. Batting ninth, the designated player, number four, Reese Newsom. And the flex player pitching number three, M. Lee. Head hey coach for the Millers is Deke Bullard. Ladies and gentlemen, at this time, if you would please rise, kindly remove hats, and direct your attention to the stars and stripes of our great country, the United States of America, and join in with our national anthem. We're just about ready to go for softball here on Hamilton County Television. We've got two 5-1 and one teams coming in here today. First, the visiting Harrison Raiders and then the Noblesville Millers. Perry, tell us a little bit about each of these teams, if you would, my friend. Sorry about that. I uh, forgot to push a button. One thing about it is, Brad, both teams are uh, are got both very good hitting teams. Uh, um, Harrison's hitting 357 and and Noblesville at uh, 414. Uh, so far this year, Noblesville's got nine home runs, and Harrison's got four. So that you know, it's going to be a good matchup. Both teams are five and one. So 
It'll be interesting. Uh, this ball game should be a good one. One of the no- things I noticed between these two teams, Perry, is the uh, starting pitchers for the Millers. M. Yee comes in with a 7.64 average. She's made three appearances. She's 0-1 in the season. But Ryland Gick for the uh, Harrison Raiders, she's got a 2.25 ERA. She's 4-1 and one on the season. So uh, we're probably, uh, you know, if, uh, if you go by those percentages, We'll have to see uh, what the Millers can do to try to uh, get on base here against Gick. Yeah, it's so right there. Uh, so leading it off for the uh, Raiders will be the second baseman, Whitney Duell. Duell is a senior. She's batting 545, not a bad batting average. That's that's great. She's leading the team in hits with 12 and eight RBIs. Yeah, the first, Harrison, A lot of people two. still pulling up here for this uh, 6 o'clock start. Nice crowd here today, 76 degrees. Wind is blowing almost straight in, so that may be a disadvantage for some of the home run hitters. Duel takes the first pitch from M.E. for ball one. The 1-0 pitch, swing and a miss at the outside high heat. Defensively for the Millers, it'll be Nevea Nash in left, Delaney, De, Delaney Rundle in center, and Mac Jackaway in right. Third to first, it'll be Chloe Vetter, Gabby Fowler, Addie Emerson, and Mac Hervey. The catcher today will be Haley Shatko. A little bit outside makes it a 2-1 count. Brad, we were talking before that ball game, that tree, uh, you got a lot of shade right there around home plate. Yeah, the pitcher is in bright sun, and then that ball is just going into that shade, and that's tough on the hitters. That one's high and outside, makes it 3-1 and on the Whitney duel. Just starting here from Noblesville High School. A beautiful afternoon for whatever sport you happen to be playing today. We happen to like softball today. That one's going to be outside. It's a Whitney duel. Patient gets herself a base on balls. That'll bring up the number two hitter, the right fielder, Rebecca Knight. Next up for the Raiders, number 16, Becca Knight. Knight's batting 214 on the season. She's a sophomore, Brad. She's had 14 or bats this season with three hits. Takes the first pitch for ball one. Yi on her f- fifth pitch, and she's managed to hit the strike zone one time. Nice bunt right in front of the plate. Catcher's got it over to first, just barely in time. But Becca Knight gets the sacrifice. One down. But the Raiders do have a runner in scoring position on that sacrifice. That'll bring up Chelsea Parker playing at first base today. Yes, she's batting 455 with 10 hits and... uh, 12 runs. Hurts pitch to Parker on the way. Called strike one. Nice pitch hit the upper outside corner of the plate. The 0 1 from Yee. Another one hits that outside corner. That's strike two. So Parker's in the hole at 0-2. Duel on second. One out.
Kind of a waste pitch there to see if uh, she get her Park, bite. You know, see if Parker would bite on that, and she didn't. It was very high and outside. The one-two pitch on the way. Strike yeah, three is her. called. Got her on that outside corner. That was a nice pitch. Beautiful pitch. Two down. That brings up the cleanup hitter, Jaden Raymer. Raymer's the leading hitter on the team. She's hitting 6'11", 18 at bats with 11 hits. Raymer with a chance to pick up an RBI here if she can get a hit. That's a little bit high for ball one. Beautiful afternoon. You know, what's so nice about this day, Perry, the fans have really got a good choice here. If you want to sit behind the plate and be in the shade, you can do that. You want to sit in the sun, sit down by the uh, the uh, uh, left and right field uh, sides of the field, and you get the sun. So got a good choice of seats here today. 1-0. Right down the heart of the plate makes it 1-1. One one. The one one from ye. It's gonna be a little bit high and outside, making a two and one. Gotta believe with a six eleven batting average, Perry, that M Ye is probably being very cautious here with uh, Jaden Raymer. Yeah, because it's it looks like she's uh she uh, you know, she hasn't got any doubles, triples, or home runs, so she's a flat out base hitter, so I would say just she good, knows how to place that ball in the field. Yeah, so. just a good contact hitter. Which is, if you can do it, makes it for a great softball player. Oh, yeah. And an even better cleanup hitter. Yeah. The 3-1 on the way. That's drilled into the gap. That's going to go all the way to the wall. That's going to score one run. Raymer's on her way to second. And that's her first double of the season. You were just talking about that. Yeah. She came through. But she hit it in a gap. Yeah. I thought for a second there that uh, Delaney Rundle might have a chance to get to that, but uh, Rundle was playing just a little bit shaded toward the uh, right field side. Ava Mobley steps up. She's the catcher. She's batting 278. And it's got uh, five hits on the season here in 2018 at bats. Takes the first pitch a little bit inside for ball one. She has three doubles and a home run, though, so she hits with a little bit of power. 1-0. That's foul over to the left field side. Once again, if you... Take a look at the camera shot that we've got now. You can see that home plate is in the shade behind the trees, and pitcher is uh, in the bright sunlight. But, you know, the fact that that uh, ball is that lime green color may make a little bit of difference. That one's going to be outside. Makes it a two-and-one count. Two balls and a strike on Ava Mobley. Another one of the seniors on this team. The 2-1, that's fouled back, makes 2-2. Two and two. Lead off walk, cost the Millers. Gave the Raiders their first run on the double from Jaden Raymer, who's Still out at second base. Two balls, two strikes, two outs. There's another one into center field. That one's hit right at Delaney Rundle. She just had to go back a few feet, and she's got it. So in the uh, top of the first for the Raiders, one run, one hit, no errors, one left on the bases. In the middle of the first, Raiders one, 
Miller is coming to bat. You're watching Hamilton County Television Sports, brought to you by Logan Street Signs and Banners in Noblesville. Celebrating over 30 years, Logan Street Signs and Banners specialize in that last-minute signage and banners, serving Noblesville and Hamilton County since 1992. You can contact them at 317-773-7200 or check them out on their website at loganstreetsigns.com. What about Noblesville Trophies? It offers you a large range of products, including sports trophies and corporate awards. Noblesville Trophies provides you with that same-day service for those last-minute decisions. Contact them at 317-773-7391 or go online and check them out at noblesvilletrophies.com. Welcome back to Noblesville Softball. It's the Millers and the Raiders. Of course, the uh, Raiders at one time were part of the uh, Hoosier Crossroad Conference, so we used to see them every year. And uh, I think we still see them on a very regular basis, but uh, two of the better uh, teams in uh, softball here in the state of Indiana. Good matchup between these two teams. But, you know, strategically, Perry, it's a little bit different now that this isn't a conference game. I think you see, uh, you know, especially uh, with your pitching. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, one thing, and it's the same way in baseball and uh, during the week. you got to take a look at the entire week's schedule in both because of the pitching matchups. No doubt about They're it. They're very important. Millers will have Delaney Rundle, Nevaeh Nash, and Gabby Fowler is their first three batters to face Ryland Gick. First batter will be Delaney Rundle. Delaney Rundle is batting 440 for the Millers. She's got 11 hits on uh, 25 times at the plate, including uh, two doubles and a, and a triple. That's a good number for a leadoff hitter, Brad. No doubt about it. Because your number one job is to get on base. Strike over the outside corner. Rundle, a junior in center field, got that third out. And that liner... It was uh, almost back to the track. That was a well-hit ball, especially for the fact that the wind is coming out of the uh, north-northwest right now. One and one on Rundle as Gick gets ready to pitch. Swing and a miss. I think what Delaney saw in that is uh, in the top of the first, that uh, outside corner, was a little bit liberal on the part of the umpire, and I think she thought I might as well swing at it because it's going to probably get rung up. There was a good eye by Delaney to make it two and two. Over that outside corner again, this time Rundle swings and misses. For the first out of the bottom of the first for the Millers. That'll bring up left fielder Nevaeh Nash. Nash hitting 375. And she has nine hits and seven runs and two RBIs. Both Rundle and Nash are both juniors. That one's a little bit outside. I don't know if Nash was thinking about bunting that or slapping at it, but she got the bat back in time. Looks like she was looking to bunt, I would say. Yeah, third baseman Raymer playing in very close. Because there's her slap swing yeah. right there. Raymer is about a third of the way up the baseline on the third base side. Same thing on the first base side. Chelsea Parker in very close. In fact, all four of the infielders are pretty close. There's one to bunt. That's going foul right over to the Miller dugout. Yeah, but that's one thing I love about uh, uh, softball is, uh, you know, that they like to bunt and the slap hit. I, I think that's pretty cool. And, mm -hmm. and the bunting, and, the, and they'll play that squeeze. And 
one-two pitch. Boy, she choked up on the bat like she was going to try to slap at that and took the pitch, make it two and two. Gabby Fowler on deck. The 2-2 from Ryland Gick. They uh, slapped at that one and sent it foul. Gick is hanging out around that outside corner there. And so far, she's done a pretty good job of it with the first two Miller batters. Misses that nice one. Nice pitch right there. Two batters for the Millers, two swinging strikeouts. I'll bring up the third batter. Shortstop, Gabby Fowler. Fowler's hit. He, she's a senior. She's hitting 600. Uh, she's batted 15 times. She has 16 home runs mm. and 16 RBIs. So you're probably not going to see her slapping the ball. I would doubt it. But she does take that first pitch for strike one. She has a record for uh, Noblesville right now and still with a lot of baseball to play and home runs. We've seen her hit a lot of balls out oh, of this yeah. park through and her she career. She did smash it. Big swing and a miss. Yeah, that's a big, powerful swing she's got. She was aiming for the scoreboard on that one. Yeah. Ryland Gick looking to strike out the sides. That one's a little bit high, makes it one and two. One-two pitch from Gick. Swing and a miss. All three batters struck out swinging. So for the Millers in the bottom of the first, no runs, no hits, no errors. Nobody left on the bases. After the end of one, Raiders one, Millers nothing. You're watching Hamilton County Television Sports, brought to you by Logan Street Signs and Manners in Noblesville. Hey, Deb, why do they call us Logan Street Signs and Banners? Because we started off at Logan Street. But we're on South 10th Street. We moved 22 years ago. Why didn't we change the name? That would have just confused everybody and they wouldn't be able to find us. Now I'm really confused. Bill, we're Logan Street Signs and Banners, conveniently not located on Logan Street, but on South 10th Street in Noblesville. Welcome back to Noblesville. Softball Supreme this afternoon. Couple of the premier softball teams in the state, the Noblesville Millers taking on the Harrison Raiders. And uh, Perry, we were talking just uh, before the game that uh, Ryland Gick with that 225 strikeout or that 225 average, she's also struck out 52 batters. And uh, she has, uh, let's see, she's four and one on the season. She's uh, she's putting on quite a show here in the early going. Oh yeah, they she uh, she throws the ball well. The six, seven, and eight batters will come up for the Raiders. Here in the top of the second, Ashley Dunk, the shortstop, steps in to face M. Ye. Yeah, she's a sophomore. She hits 294. She's had 17 at bats and five hits Leading and five off, RBIs. Number 22, Ashley. Dunk. Brad, one thing, Ashley Dunk also has nine strikeouts for the season. Takes the first pitch for ball one. That's a strike over the outside corner. Count evens up at a ball and a strike. The 1-1, one, one, a little bit outside, makes it 2-1.
That one misses on the outside corner again. Makes it three and one on Ashley Dunk. You know, Yee, the first inning, uh, walked the first batter, and they, they scored off of that, so. And it was a 3-1 count when she walked her. Yeah. That one's going to be high, and the leadoff batter reaches again. For the Raiders, that's always a bad omen. When that first batter reaches, no outs. Next up for the Raiders, number 14, Laney Shallon. Fourth time this season that uh, Dunk has uh, reached base by the walk. Laney Schallenberger. Yeah, she's a junior. She's hitting 300. Throw over to first back in time. Dunk really wasn't paying a whole lot of attention over there at first base. And uh, Haley Shatko. She sent the ball right down there and ended up being a fairly close play. 0-1-1 on Schallenberger. That's going to be outside, make it 1-1. Same situation in the first inning. When uh, Becca Knight came up, she sacrificed Whitney Duell over to uh, second and eventually Duell scored the uh, only run of the game. There's a ground ball. That could be two. Got her tagged. Smart move there by uh, Addie Emerson. Yeah, that to ball, get that lead runner. Yeah, it wasn't hit real hard, Perry, so uh, it just so happened that uh, Ashley Dunk was almost right in front of her when she, uh, when she scooped that up. So she got the tag on her for the first out of the game. So Schallenberger officially will reach on a fielder's choice. That will bring Hannah Vall to the plate, the center fielder. Vall batting 273. She's another junior. 11 at bats and three hits. Six RBIs, though. Nice pitch there by Yee getting the uh, lower outside corner for strike one. Oh and one One out, one on. Swing and a miss, 0-2. Schallenberger on first, reaching on the fielder's choice. That heads up play by Addie Emerson, kept the runner out of scoring position. See if Yee can get a strike out here. That one's high. Again, Shatko looked like she might throw down to first, but she did not. Make it one and two. Infielders playing at normal depth. Bouncing ball. They got runners on first and second now. Well, see, that's a little difference between baseball and softball. In baseball, that runner would have been out if the ball would have hit him. But softball, it is not an out. And hit that ball getting hit, it really uh, threw things off for Mac Hervey. So you've got to give uh, Vall a hit. Schallenberger moves over to second. Micah Wright, the left fielder, the number nine batter, steps in. Wright squared to bunt, but took the pitch for ball one. She's batting 214. She has a three hits on the season. 14 at bats. That's a tough break for the Millers on that grounder that was going to first. 2-0 and oh on Micah Wright. Top of the order. Next batter will be Whitney Duell. One thing different, Brad, too, than baseball is that Softball, that third baseman has got to be an animal, man, because oh, yeah. she plays in so tight to the plate there. 
two and I believe and that was called a ball, so I believe that's three and zero oh now. Yeah, three and zero. Oh. Right, a two fourteen hitter. That's going to be ball four, and that's going to load up the bases. He's struggling a little bit on throwing strikes today. Yeah, it's the third walk she's already given up here in uh, an inning and a third. And the Millers gather at uh, the circle to talk about it. So they'll have uh, Lamey Schallenberger on third, Hannah Vall on second, Micah Wright on first, Whitney Duels at the plate. She walked to start the game in the first inning. Duel's only a freshman, Brad. I would say she's got a very bright future with this team, batting yeah. 545. Next up, Taylor Harrison, number 11, Whitney Duels. She's only had four at bats so far this season, though. Strike one is called. Maybe that'll give uh, M. Yee a little bit of confidence. One down, the bases are loaded. Top of the second, Raiders already up by one. Swing and a miss. 0-2. Oh Ooh, that one almost got away. Good job there by Haley Shatko to keep that ball from going back to the screen. Although as close as the uh, screen yeah, is here at the home plate, it's a, it makes it a little yeah. bit more difficult to score on a pass ball like that because a lot of times that ball would just, a pitch thrown that hard, would just bounce right back to the catcher. Yep. One-two pitch. Way outside. Makes it two and two. Strike three call. That is a big out for the Millers. And I'll bring up Becca Knight. With the contrast on these uniforms, it's very, very difficult to read the numbers on oh, the players. Oh, absolutely. I, man, it, it's really tough here in the truck to, to look at them off the TV, especially when they're in the... Well, and then when you've got two duels playing in the game, you got number four, an M duel, and number 11, Whitney duel. Makes it even more difficult when you got the names duplicated. 1-0 and on Becca Knight. Swing and a miss. Evens the count up at one ball, one strike. Nice block there. Yeah, great job. Fortunately for the Millers, no damage done on that. Haley Shatko's done a great job behind the plate in the early going here, Perry. The 2-1 pitch. Swing and a miss. Makes it 2-2. Two and two. Chelsea Parker would be the next batter if Knight reaches. Two balls, two strikes, two outs. The bases are loaded.
Swing and a miss. Strike three. That's a big, big out. That is a huge out, my friend. Leaving three uh, runners on base. There was uh, no runs, one hit. Three runners left. Middle of the second, still the Raiders won, uh, Miller's nothing. You're watching Hamilton County Television Sports, brought to you by Logan Street Signs and Banners in Noblesville. Gator Electric, the highest performing national contractor of excellence. Since 1984, Gator Electric success continues to be built upon the cornerstone of reliable resources, reliable outcomes, insights fueled by the genuine care for people. Gator Electric, along with Chuck Gridgerich, President and CEO are proud sponsors of Hamilton County Sports. What about uh, community health? Are you struggling with lingering injuries or do you have trouble doing things you love to do because of an injury? Don't let sprain strains keep you down. Make an appointment at Community Sports Medicine Physician. Visit ecommunity.com slash sports. Miller's trying to uh, cut into this one to nothing lead against the Raiders so far. It's been all Raiders, but uh, fortunately, Millers are only behind by one run. Mac Harvey steps in, the cleanup hitter for the Millers. Strike one on Harvey. Quite a few Harrison people here today. Yeah, yeah. Harvey's batting 474. She's another senior. She has nine hits and two home runs and two doubles. That one's high. It'll even up the count at a ball and a strike. So another guy that's got a lot of power. Mm Mm-hmm. Actually, that breeze feels pretty good here in the press box right now. Yeah. Harvey just barely got under that one and fouled it back. She's down one and two in the count. That one hits the outside corner. Another strikeout for Rylan Gick. She struck out the first four batters she's faced. Next up for the Millers, number 21, Chloe Vetter. Chloe Vetter steps into the batter's box. Vetter batting 353. Millers just have not been able to get the bat on the ball no, today. No, not at all. Six hits on... Uh, seven RBIs and four doubles. You know, one thing about it is, you know, like we talked before the game, numbers are coming in this game hitting 414 as a team. Mm-hmm. So there's some players that can hit the ball. Oh, no doubt about it. But you're also going up against a pitcher that's got a 225 ERA, and so it's quite a battle. That one comes right back. That would have been right in my face. <laughs> that, 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 that not been there, Perry. We'd have had to make a catch, or I'd have had a duck awful quick. And Steve Shaw sitting over to my left going, ha, 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 ha. <laughs> uh, we make fun of Steve. He's one of the good guys. There's another foul ball. I think Vetter's one of the only Millers who's actually made some contact with the ball so far here, and she's the uh, fifth batter that Gick has faced. Yeah, because Gick struck out four batters so far. Mm -hmm. Three of them swinging, one of them looking. There's number five. Second out of the bottom of the second. Right fielder Mac Jackway steps up to the plate. At the plate for Noblesville, number 14, Michaela Jackaway. Michaela Jackaway, better known as Mac, batting 333. Shows bunt but takes it back and swings and misses. Jackaway is hitting 333. She's got uh, nine hits on the season. No, I'm sorry. 
four hits on the season, but two are doubles. Another swing and a miss. Ryland Gick has just been in the zone tonight, Perry. That one's way outside. So that'll make it one and two. One, two pitch from Ryland Gick. Right over the outside corner, the plate about belt high. Six strike out of the strike game. Strike three called. As you said, that's six in a row for Ryland Gick. After two, still the Raiders won Miller's nothing. You're watching Hamilton County Television Sports, brought to you by Logan Street Signs and Banners in Noblesville. Hey, Deb, why do they call us Logan Street Signs and Banners? Because we started off at Logan Street. But we're on South 10th Street. We moved 22 years ago. Why didn't we change the name? That would have just confused everybody and they wouldn't be able to find us. Now I'm really confused. Bill, we're Logan Street Signs and Banners, conveniently not located on Logan Street, but on South 10th Street in Noblesville. Welcome back to Noblesville High School. Noblesville softball on Hamilton County Television Sports. Thank you for joining us tonight. I'm Brad Silbert along with Perry Williams. And Perry, the only comment I can make about the weather is, wow, especially after what we had last week. This is great. Absolutely. The only comment I can make about this game so far is, wow. Ryland Gick has just been amazing. But, you know, the Millers did a good job there in the second, yeah, they not got allowing a, a run. Yeah, they got out of a big hole there. Yes, they did. Chelsea Parker will lead it off here for the Raiders. Once again, we're having an extremely tough time reading these uh, numbers, uniform yeah. numbers. Parker struck out the last time up. Strike over the outside corner. The 0 1 pitch. It's going to be a little bit outside. Evens the count up at a ball and a strike here in the top of the third. Harrison, of course, from West Lafayette, Indiana. What, about 65, 70 miles northwest of us, Perry, I think? Yeah, pretty close. About an hour's ride. That one's hit to the shortstop Fowler. Over to first. Look at that hustle that Parker had down that line there, Perry, and uh, Fowler still managed to get her. Fowler's got a cannon. Got a good arm. Third baseman Jada Ram Jaden Raymer steps up. She had a double and one RBI in the first inning. She had a perfectly placed double there into the gap in left center field. In fact, that's her first double of the season. Yeah, you were commenting that all she had before was uh, single base hits. Which are nothing wrong with that in no, softball. No, absolutely. Or in any game, really. Mm-hmm. One and zero on Jaden Raymer. That one catches the outside corner, evens it up at a ball and a strike. Raymer took a three-one pitch all the way to the wall to get that RBI in the first. It's the only run of the game so far. And that's going to be foul. I thought Chloe Vetter might have a chance to grab that in foul territory, but it was probably maybe a foot or two off of her glove, but she gave it the effort. Mm -hmm. 
Makes it a one ball, two strike count. One, two pitch, that's a little bit outside. Both of these pitchers have done a pretty good job of hitting that outside corner of the plate so far, Perry, but that one was probably a good six inches off the plate. Two, two. There's a pop-up. Who's going to get that? Delaney Rundle had a pretty long run there, but she managed to get under it and got the second out. One thing about a fly ball like that, that if that center fielder can get to it, that's the best chance you got. Yeah, she got a good jump on that ball. Ava Mobley steps in. Now she flew out to right fielder Mac Jackway the last time up. That ended the first inning. A little bit high for ball one. Not a bad pitch on the first pitch. No, though. not at all. A lot of times you'll get that batter over, a little bit over anxious and yeah. they'll go for that high, high ball. Nice pitch, nice fastball. Right over the outside corner, evens that count up at a ball and a strike. One and one, two outs, nobody on. That one's a little bit outside. Little high makes it three and one. The three one pitch. That one's driven to center field. That's well hit. Is that going to be out of here? It is. Just barely over the fence. But Ava Mobley touches all four. And for Ava Mobley, that is her second home run of the season. That ball was well hit on the line. And I thought for a moment there, Delaney Rundle might have a chance to yeah, get that's it. that's kind of what I thought. But it just... Uh, I don't think that thing cleared the fence by much more than a foot or two. Yeah. Yeah, she just wasn't quite tall enough there to grab that off. That's a tough. That's a tough to to grab too, though. Ashley Dunk steps in. She walked in the second. Another nice stop by Shatko there. A ball and no strikes. That one's going to be low, making it 2-0. and oh. so Ava Mobley is now giving the uh, Raiders a 2 nothing lead here in the third on that home run. That one's outside, 3-0. and oh. Outfielders playing fairly deep for Dunk. That 
one bounces in. And Ashley Dunk takes her base on four pitches. Then we'll bring up uh, Laney Schallenberger. At the plate for the Raiders, number 14, Laney Schallenberger. That one's outside. That's uh, five balls in a row now by M.E. You know, you can understand her being a little upset giving up the uh, run and the home run. but uh, Yeah, especially with the first two batters. She did such yeah. a good job on mm-hmm. it. She struck out one and the other one flied out. So Finally gets a called strike there in the outside corner. I think that home run kind of stuck. Yes, bit. it did. Schellenberger reached on a fielder's choice in the second, eventually made it to third base, but did not score. There's a foul ball. Millers get a break on that one. That ball was well out of the zone. Somebody's car horn going off here in the background. (laughs) There's a ground ball. That's going to be a tough play to make. Will they get over there in time? Overthrows. And the the Raiders are going to have runners on first and third. As Ashley Dunk took off with the pitch. And Lady Schellenberg reaches on the throwing air. Call that an E5. That was well over the head of Mac Hervey at first base. That'll bring up Hannah Vall. She had a base hit her last time up. At the plate for Harrison, number two, Hannah Vall. That one's popped up, foul straight back. Unfortunately for Haley Shatko, you can't feel that on the bounce. <laughs> Was that an arena football they can use the net, I think? Yeah. Pretty good crowd here tonight. Nice crowd, very nice crowd. On both fields. Mm-hmm. JV's playing right behind them. Right back to Yi. It oh, went God. right between her legs. She just couldn't get down there at times, it, in time, and you can't uh, you can't blame that one on M. I mean, she was coming out of a out of her motion. That ball went right straight between her legs. So Hannah Vall has got her second base hit of the night. Put another run on the board, another hit for the Raiders. That makes it three to nothing now. And the number nine batter, Micah Wright, That's steps in. Runners all first and second yep. here. She walked in the second. That one's a little bit outside. Looked like M. Yi was uh, cruising along there until Ava Mobley took a 3-1 pitch straight to center field and over the fence. That's outside, makes it two balls and a strike. Raiders with two on the board here so far at the top of the third. Swing and a miss. Throw over to first. Ball is back in plenty of time. Evens a count up at two balls and two strikes. Two Millers run. need an out here one way or the other. Yeah, because two runs have scored on two outs. Full count. Everybody be going. (laughs) 
Another foul ball back to the left. Right as the seventh batter, the Raiders are sent to the plate so far here in the top of the third. Somebody can't control their car horn over here. <laughs> the 3-2 pitch. Chloe Vetter made a nice dive for that ball, but it just came off of her mitt. Had that been fair, she could have picked it up and had the force at third, but as it is, Micah Wright is going to have another, another swing. Swing and a miss. So in the inning for the Raiders, there's two runs on two hits, one air, two left on the bases. We're in the middle of the third. You're watching Hamilton County Television Sports, brought to you by Logan Street Signs and Banners in Noblesville. Blades Audio Video Security is Indiana's premier K-12 audio video security provider. Blades AVS is a design build firm that provides high quality solutions that are designed, engineered, installed, and warranted by our team of experts. For 18 years, we've been helping schools and local business to hear more clearly and see. We've added securing your facilities to how we can serve you. So, whether it's a sound system, your displays, your network, you're building security. Ask how our experienced Blades Audio Video Security team can serve your business. I'm Brad Silbert along with Perry Williams from Noblesville. It's the Millers and the Raiders locked up in a duel here. So far, it's been all Raiders, but the score is only three to nothing, Perry. And the uh, Raiders have already uh, left five people on base. Yeah. Let's see, be interesting to see if this will come back and haunt them here. And Pop up over to the right. That's going toward the concession stand. Well, hit the concession stand. Right on top of the old press box. <laughs> oh, and one on Shatko. I think she might have got a little tip on that ball, but it, any, any way you look at it, it's 0-2. Kick is really on. I mean, oh, she's yeah. just a dominating performance so far. She's done a tremendous job today. Oh. Well, except for that pitch. <laughs> Maybe we shouldn't have said anything, right? <laughs> oh, that's a major league outside ball. Yeah. A little high yeah. outside. Bob Euchre ball. The one two pitch. Swing and a miss. Seventh batter in a row that Gick has struck out. Nobody has reached base for the Millers. Now I got five of those swinging, seven, two of them looking. Addie Emerson, the second baseman, steps in. Takes the first pitch outside. I'm not sure what her pitch count is, but that uh, ball, according to what I've got here, is the Tenth ball that she's thrown, tenth, tenth pitch for a ball that she's thrown in uh, two and a third innings. She's thrown 34 pitches and 22 for strikes. Mm. Amazing. Amazing. 
Emerson a junior. She's hitting 278. She's got five hits on the season. Let's see if she can reach here. That hit the inside corner for a called strike. The three-one pitch. Ooh, that ties it up. To yep. Full count. First time she's gone to a full count tonight. That one oh, hits wow. that inside corner. Wow, what a tremendous comeback there. She was. just froze her. I mean, she came from a 3-0 and count. Two outs now in the bottom of the third. Eight in a row have gone down on strikeouts for the Millers. Not the kind of thing you really want to talk about, Barry. No, but it's reality. Yeah. we got to call them like we see them. Swing and a miss. Newsom's a, a freshman. Uh, she's only batted seven times this season, but she's had five hits. So, Let's see if she can break this streak. That one's, she squares to bunt. It ends up going foul. Oh, and two on Reese Newsom, the ninth batter that Ryland Gick has faced. Eight of them have struck out so far. Oh boy, that was close. Nice eye, lady. Nice eye. A ball and two strikes on Newsom. She's the designated player in the lineup tonight. Makes it two and two. Well, Emerson took her to a full count before striking out. Let's see what happens here. Swing and a miss. And the Millers go down swinging in the bottom of the third. No runs, no hits, no errors. Nobody left after three. Harry. And three, Miller's nothing. You're watching Hamilton County Television Sports, brought to you by Logan Street Signs and Banners in Noblesville. Can I help you? Yeah, I'd like to order a hamburger, fries, salt, maybe a large vanilla shake. This is a trophy shop, can't you tell? You got carry out? Everything that you need, we have here at the shop. Very unique. You order today, carry out tonight, that's our version of carry out. All right, I'll take one of everything. Oh, that may take a little longer. We'll have it for you tomorrow night. I'll be back tomorrow to pick it up. We'll be waiting for you. Welcome back to Noblesville. I'm Brad Silbert along with Perry Williams. And Perry, I don't know if you've got a uh, record book uh, down there of any kind, but I'm uh, kind of wondering if uh, young Miss Gick isn't uh, either going to uh, go into the record books or getting very close. Well, I don't have a record book down here yet, but she's pitching a great game. I oh, mean, she is. Um, one thing about it is, you know, Brad, uh, uh, this is a, it's been an amazing performance here um, by this young lady. And uh, when when you no get in a zone it. like this, you, you're tough. And, and the big one was she came back from a 3-0 and count and mm -hmm. struck the batter out. I mean, yeah. that's. That's just flat out getting it. That is. That and is. like I said, she's thrown 48 pitches and 28 have been for strikes. Well, and, of course, she's only faced nine batters. Well, speaking of pitchers, we're getting a pitching change here for the Millers. It's going to be Lulu Van Beek out on the mound now. Let me see if I got something on Lulu, and I'm sure I do here, Brad. Hang on. Now pitching for Noblesville, number 11, Lulu Van Beek. Van Beek's pitched uh, 8.2 innings this season. Uh, she has uh, 
earned run average of 8.08. Uh, she's uh, given up 18 hits, 14 runs, struck out four. First pitch from Van Beek. And she's a senior. To uh, Whitney Duell is a called strike. There's one right back to Van Beek. She didn't have to move her glove, but six inches to get that one, Perry. And what's up? So there's one down here in the top of the fourth. Sixteen, Becca Knight is the batter. Harrison, number sixteen, Becca Knight. She has a sacrifice and a strikeout. That one's going to go for a hit right over the head of Chloe Vetter and into uh, left field. That'll be the uh, fifth hit of the game for the Raiders. That'll bring up uh, Chelsea Parker. Parker struck out and bounced out to short. Next up, yes. the Raiders, number 24, Chelsea Parker. Parker takes the first pitch for ball one. Second pitch to Parker. That stays fair. That could be trouble. It is a foul ball just out of the reach of Nevaeh Nash. Perry, she almost had that ball. If that ball had been fair, she probably would have caught it. Good effort by Nash. Owen one on Becca Knight. There's one that's going to go into the gap. Nobody's going to get to that. That's going to hit the fence. We're going to have runners on second and third with one out. As Chelsea Parker gets the two base hit, the second hit of the inning. This should be number 30, Jaden Raymer stepping to the plate. At the plate for Harrison, number 30, Jaden Raymer. As you look at the back of the Harrison uniforms, the numbers are almost non existent yeah, on those. On Strike one on Raymer. She had a double, picked up an RBI in the first inning, grounded to short in the third. We're in the top of the fourth, one down. Raiders threatening once again. Van Beek ahead of Raymer, 0-2. The 0-2 pitch, swing and a miss. Raymer is retired. Second out of the inning. Ava Mobley steps in, the catcher. For Harrison, number 42, Ava Mobley. Mobley had that home run to center field her last time up in the uh, third inning. One and zero on Mobley. That one's followed into the screen over on the right side. Makes it a 1-1 count. Mobley, a senior catcher, also plays third base for the Raiders. Another foul back. That makes it 1-2. and two. Two hits so far in this inning. Runners on second and third. 
Becca Knight on third. Chelsea Parker on second. Another foul ball. Ava Mobley's fouled off about three or four in a row, and they've all gone to that right side. Just before you get to the dugout. One and two, two outs. That one's high and outside. Evens up the count, two balls, two strikes. Two-two pitch. High pop-up, well hit. Is that going to stay in the park? No. Another home run for Ava Mobley. That's two home runs on the game for her. Gives her three RBIs. That was a good hit ball. It was a very well hit ball out there. Just uh, more in center than left, but uh, right in right in that power alley. She got under that, and even in spite of the wind blowing in, that ball carried. And Becca Knight and Chelsea Parker scored in front of her. So it makes the score six to nothing. Makes now. it yes, six nothing now. Way Giggs pitching is going to be a tough comeback here. Yes, it is. It was only the second hit of the inning. Ashley Dunk steps in. She's walked twice. Right back to Van Beek. And that will end the uh, top of the fourth. So in the top of the fourth for the Raiders, there were three runs and two hits. No errors. Nobody left on the bases. Middle of the fourth. Raiders six. Miller's nothing. You're watching Hamilton County Television Sports. Brought to you by Logan Street Signs and Manners in Noblesville. Looking for someone to help navigate buying and or selling a home? Let Sarah Cleverly help you find the home of your dreams. Clev's a resident of Noblesville for almost 40 years. A Noblesville graduate and an invested member in the community. For your next real estate experience, close it with Clev. Give her a call on 317-695-6114. Brad, one thing we want to talk about tomorrow night, Hamilton County TV will be broadcasting the girls lacrosse, both JV and varsity game. JV starts at at 530. Uh, then on Friday, we will be at uh, uh, we'll be uh, at the dunk doing Franklin Central. And then, of course, your game you and I are pretty excited about because uh, on Monday is Ham- Noblesville will play Hamilton Heights at Noblesville Forest Park. And that's, uh, that, that ought to be a fun one, Peter. Yeah, that'll be a fun one. And I, I spent a lot of years out there at that Forest Park Diamond, so I have a lot of memories out there. Oh, yeah. It's such a beautiful facility. Millers need some base runners and some hits. Ground ball to short, scooped up well over to first. They're calling, what are they calling now? I think, are they calling catcher interference? The ball was hit to the third baseman, Raymer. And it was hit a hard line drive. She juggled it a little bit. Did get the throw off to first base, but uh, the home plate umpire very quickly called the out. I'm not sure. I'm not sure what the explanation is here. Now I'm hearing that she may have stepped on the plate. So any way you look at it, it's an out. It's an out for uh, Delaney Rundle. How do we score that? <laughs> I've never had that one before. O-U-T, Brad. Yeah. <laughs> it's an out. Yeah. 
no doubt about it. <laughs> One out. One and oh. And Nevea Nash takes that one, makes it one and one. Yeah, the home plate umpire was very quick to uh, call her out. Well, that had to give you a first clue that it happened right up there in the box, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. well, that's why I was thinking, could it have been catcher's interference? But uh, Well, the other thing I wondered is, The Raider infield in, that one goes foul. Makes it a two ball, two strike count. Now we're hearing speculation that uh, the way she possibly slapped at the ball, she may have stepped on the plate when she was actually batting instead of leaving the box. That one's low, makes it a full count. Can the Millers get a runner here? Millers need a lot of runners and a lot of runs here in the bottom of the fourth or behind six to nothing. That one goes foul, the count remains three and two. Well, Rundle is the first batter of this game, but Ryland Gick has not struck out. She struck out nine in a row to open this game. Another full count pitch coming to Nevaeh Nash. That one goes right to the third baseman who's playing very close, but manages to get it. Jaden Ramsey. Made the play. Two down in the bottom of the fourth. Gabby Fowler steps up. At the play, four doubles on number six. Every Miller, the first time at bat, struck out in this game. Strike one is called on Gabby Fowler. Fowler is batting 600. That one goes foul into the JV field. Almost hit home plate over there. Fowler with a 600 batting average. He's been at the plate 26 times. Officially, she has 15 at bats. The 0-2, a little bit outside. One and two. The one-two pitch from Gick. That one's fouled back also. Fowler's only got, before this game started today, she only had two strikeouts on the season. Still one and two on shortstop Gabby Fowler. That one's a little bit low and outside. Evens up the count of Two balls, two strikes. That one's high, full count. Wind blowing straight in. That one's followed back again. Of 
Quite a battle here between Fowler and Gick. Pitching circle still in bright sunlight. But the ball's got to go through some shadows, some sunlight, and back into shadows at the plate. Another foul ball back. One thing about it, Brad, with nine strikeouts in this game in the first three innings, it don't matter. Yeah. <laughs> you haven't got to see the ball. Yeah. As an infielder. Mm hmm. Well, the batters for the Raiders haven't had any trouble picking it up. Yeah. Full count pitch. Another foul ball. Boy, that was a hot shot. That one could have uh, that one could have done some damage. That was one of those ones you don't want to catch. Exactly. Unless you got a well padded glove on. Three balls, two strikes. Two outs, nobody on. So the Millers have finally got a base runner. That was a good at bat for Fowler. Though. Yes, it was. That will bring up Mac Hervey, first baseman. Next up for the Millers, number 27, Mac Hervey. One and zero on Harvey. That one hit the outside corner. Oh one two on Harvey. She struck out looking in the second. Swing and a miss. Now it's one and two. Runner on first, two outs. That one ends up going outside, evens it up at two and two. Harvey reaches, Chloe Vetter will be the next batter. Swing and a miss. Harvey goes down as do the Millers in the bottom of the fourth, in the bottom of the fourth for the Millers. No runs, no hits, no errors. One left on the bases at the end of four. Lafayette Harrison six, Noblesville nothing. You're watching Hamilton County Television Sports, brought to you by Logan Street Signs and Banners in Noblesville. Hey, Deb, why do they call us Logan Street Signs and Banners? Because we started off at Logan Street. But we're on South 10th Street. We moved 22 years ago. Why didn't we change the name? That would have just confused everybody and they wouldn't be able to find us. Now I'm really confused. Bill, we're Logan Street Signs and Banners, conveniently not located on Logan Street, but on South 10th Street in Noblesville. Welcome back to Noblesville High School. I'm Brad Silver along with Perry Williams. And Perry, we've seen... Uh, Young Miss Ryland Gick pitch uh, quite a game so far here today for the uh, Harrison Raiders. Yeah, Brad, one thing about it is, you know, at the end of uh, at the end of the third inning, you know, she had uh, 43 pitches. Mm -hmm. And now here at the end of the fourth inning, she has 66. Yeah, she, uh, shall we say, struggled a little bit in the fourth. but uh, Yeah, I wouldn't say struggled, but. Went deep She's into the getting, count. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, Still got the job done. There may there may be some a tad bit of fatigue there. Oh, I can understand that. Lulu Van Beek. Leading off the top of the fifth for Harrison. Number back on the field for her second inning of work. Laney Schellenberger, the designated player, steps in for her third at bat. 
Reached on a fielder's choice and reached on an error. Takes the first pitch for ball one. We're in the top of the fifth. Thank you for joining us this afternoon on Hamilton County Television Sports, brought to you by Logan Street Signs and Banners in Noblesville. Nice to have you with us. Wherever you're watching from today on the World Wide Web, we appreciate it. Thanks to our technical crew today, our executive producer, director, Jim Wofford. Camera operator today is Lucas Lacone. I stand corrected. It is the other Lacone, the other world-famous Lacone, August Lacone, here this evening. You look at the two of them, they look a lot alike, except one wears glasses and the other doesn't. Two and one. Another foul ball. Over to the left side. Makes it two and two. So far, the hero of the day, besides the pitching, batting-wise, has been Ava Mobley, who's had two home runs tonight, counted for four of the six runs that are on the scoreboard for the Harrison Raiders. Three-two pitch, another foul ball. Perry, is it just me, or does it seem like there's been a lot of foul balls in this game tonight? There's been a lot of foul balls. Another full count pitch from Van Beek. The leadoff runner is going to reach on a walk. Third time, Laney Schellenberger has reached. One on a fielder's choice, one on an air, and one on a walk. It'll bring up center fielder, Hannah Vall. That's going to go into center field, just barely out of the reach of Gabby Fowler. I thought Fowler might have a chance at that when that left the bat, Perry, but it didn't. she didn't miss that by much. But here we go again with the Raiders. First two runners are on. I've got the Raiders now with seven hits. Micah Wright, the left fielder, steps up to the plate. That one hits the outside corner for strike one. I mean, in all honesty, Perry, the Millers really have not played what I would call a bad game. It's just that... Uh, Their pitching has been superb, and they've gotten the hits when they uh, when they needed them. Ryland Gick has just done a great job out there on the plate, uh, or out there on the mound. 0-2 on Micah Wright. The 0-2 pitch, strike three is called. Wright is retired looking. First out of the fifth inning. We're back to the top of the order. This will be Whitney Duell stepping in. Now batting for Harrison, number 11, Whitney Duell. Duell has walked and struck out twice. Rather, struck out once and grounded back to the pitcher in the fourth. Fouls off the first pitch for a strike. The 0 1 fouled it off again.
0-2 on Duel. Takes that to make it 1-2. and Six nothing in favor of the Raiders. Ground ball, second baseman over there, scoops it up, manages to just shovel that ball over to Mac Harvey to get the out. Addie Emerson made a nice play on that. She had to go quite a ways to get that. That's two down. Runners advance on the uh, ground out. Schellenberger now at third. Ball at first, or at second. High pop-up. Is that going to stay in play or catchable? No. Out of the stadium. Nevaeh Nash never had a chance on that one. Back at night, one for three. Sacrifice in the first. That sacrifice led to the first run for the Raiders. Lulu Van Beek is ready. The 1-1. One, one. A little bit low on outside. Two balls and a strike. Swing and a miss, evens it up at two and two. Miller's need an out here to keep this thing at a six run lead. Swing and a miss, they got it. So in the top of the fifth for the Raiders, there was no runs. One hit, no errors, two left on the bases. Middle of the fifth, still Raiders six, Miller's nothing. You're watching Hamilton County Television Sports, brought to you by Logan Street Signs and Banners in Noblesville. Celebrating over 30 years, Logan Street Signs and Banners specialize in that last-minute signs and banners. Serving Noblesville and Hamilton County since 1992. You can contact them at 317-773-7200. Or check them out on our website, loganstreetsigns.com. What about Nomazil Trophers? It offers a large range of products, including sports trophies and corporate awards. Nomazil Trophies provide you with that same-day service for those last-minute decisions. Contact them at 317-773-7391. Or check them out online at nomaziltrophies.com. Well, Perry Ryland Gick is out there still in the circle, starting her fifth inning of work. Has yet to give up a hit. Yeah, she's been a fantastic game. Yes, she right. has. The only base runner she's let uh, get to the bases was Fowler. Gabby Fowler, who walked. This is Chloe Vetter stepping in for her at second at bat. But that was the one thing about the Fowler-Gick bat there. That was a great pitcher p- pitching against a, a great hitter. And, oh, no doubt. And Fowler fouled off a ton of baseballs. I mean softballs. Mm-hmm. There's a pop-up. Is that going to stay in or is that going to be caught? It is caught. Very nice job there by Hannah Ball to retire Chloe Vetter. First out of the bottom of the fifth. Well hit ball there, Perry. Yeah, certainly was. You got to give Vol credit because uh, she was kind of looking back toward the sun on that one. Not necessarily straight in her eyes, but uh, it was there. Could have been a big factor. Mac Jackaway steps up. Jackaway showing bunt, brings the ball back. 
She gets the first hit of the game for the Millers, a solid single into right field. Nice hit. Yeah. So the Millers get on the board as far as hits. Broke up the no-hitter. And Haley Shatko will step in. At the plate for Noblesville, number 10, Haley Shatko. 15th batter finally got the first hit for the Millers. Chatko takes a called strike right down the heart of the plate. No doubt about that one. That one hits the inside corner of the plate and Shat goes in the hole at 0-2. We're in the bottom of the fifth. Miller's with their second base runner of the game. First hit of the game for Jackway over there on first base. Gick delivers. That's going to be another hit. Millers are going to have runners on first and second. Two hits in a row here by the Millers. Running at first base for the Millers, number 31, Macy Duvall. Macy Duvall. It's courtesy runner. Will be the courtesy runner. Emerson up to bat for the Millers Next here. Next up for the Millers, number seven, Addie Emerson. Addie Emerson steps in for her second at bat. She struck out the first time. Owen won on Emerson. You'll one pitch outside. Miller's trying to, well, first thing they needed to do in this inning was get a hit. Second thing they need to do is get some runs. Swing and a miss. Makes it one and two on Addie Emerson. One down, two runners on board. That one's popped up. I don't think there'll be a play on that. Nope, it's back behind us. Hit the net. Eddie Emerson back at the plate. That one's high, evens the count up at two and two. Miller batters being much more patient here, Perry, here in the late going in this game. Yeah, and they, they've got some good swings in this inning. That one's high. Emerson has worked it to a full count.
Full count pitch on the way. A little bit high and inside. And the Millers have the bases loaded. Two hits and a walk so far. Here in the bottom of the fifth for the Millers. Newsom will be the batter for the Millers. Uh, she struck out uh, the first time. This is only her second time to bat. Over talking to the coaching staff right now. The bases are loaded, only one out. One thing you don't want to do is hit into a double play. Yeah. Ryland Gick was just sailing along here through the uh, first four and a third, got the first out and a fly out to center field. And since then, two run or two hits and one walk have loaded the bases. Newsom up there 0-1. You're in there, you got it. Little bit outside. Evens it up at one and one. One ball, one strike, one out. The bases are loaded. There's a pop-up into center field. Center fielder is coming in. She's got it. There's going to be no play, though. Mac Jackaway saw how hard that ball was hit. And I think she and the third base coaching staff knew that uh, probably wasn't much of a chance of scoring on that one. Two down now. Top of the order back up, Delaney Rundle. Now batting for the Millers, number one, Delaney Rundle. Last time she was up, she was called out when she stepped on the plate while she was trying to swing. She did make contact with the ball, hit it to the third baseman, but once she stepped on that plate during that... Uh, at bat, she was out. Two down. Millers with the bases loaded. Love to get on the scoreboard here. That evens it up at one and one. Rundle a junior. One one pitch, followed off to the left side. A base hit to that left side with that little slap would be a. Oh, that'd be big. Thing, yeah. Mm -hmm. Rundle's improved her hitting a lot since last season. Betting four forty. 25 at bats. Trying to slap at it again. Just got under it. Count stays at one and two. Seems like it's been one and two for about three or four pitches now. That one's outside. Makes it two and two. Good patience on the part of Rundle there, Perry. Yeah, certainly was. Bases loaded, two outs, two and two on the batter. Ooh, a little bit outside. Rundle looked like she was going to try to slap at that, but. 3-2 pitch. Runners will be off with the pitch. Another foul ball. I 
I've got her with either eight, nine, or ten pitches. I'm not sure which it is in this against uh, Rundell. So it's been a been a battle. Another full count pitch. Kick is ready. Rundle's ready. That one is going to be just over the third baseman's head. And the Millers are on the board. The right fielder, Micah Wright, she made quite an effort trying to get to that ball. What what happened? I'm not sure what has happened here. I have absolutely no idea what the call was here, but all of a sudden, the Raiders came off the field. We're hearing it may be a batter's box violation now, but we're not, you know, we have not had anything official. But anyways, the uh, bottom of the six is over. And in the bottom of the six for the Millers, there were no runs, two hits, no errors. Three left on the bases. We're through five. It's the Lafayette Harrison Raiders six, Noblesville Millers nothing. You're watching Hamilton County Television Sports, brought to you by Logan Street Signs and Manners in Noblesville. Hey, Deb, why do they call us Logan Street Signs and Banners? Because we started off at Logan Street. But we're on South 10th Street. We moved 22 years ago. Why didn't we change the name? That would have just confused everybody and they wouldn't be able to find us. Now I'm really confused. Bill, we're Logan Street Signs and Banners, conveniently not located on Logan Street, but on South 10th Street in Noblesville. Welcome back to Noblesville softball. We are told now that uh, Delaney Runnell stepped out of the batter's box toward the plate as she tried to slap at that ball, which she did successfully. But that is a violation, so that is a, uh, actually it's a uh, dead ball violation. So no runs were scored in that inning, unfortunately, for the Millers. Yeah, the one thing about it is, Brad, yeah, that's a six, that's a characteristic of a, a slap hitter. That, yeah, that sometimes because that's a very fine line. You, you know, it it looks easy up there being a slap hitter, but I I've known many good slap hitters, and mm -hmm. it, it's a skill, man. I mean, you got to really be good at it. Batter is Chelsea Parker, the first baseman. But takes the, one the thing, second the, pitch. Make, I'm sorry, Perry, go ahead. The one thing about it is, you know, that's, that's a tough situation. Oh, yeah. A couple hits and, and having bases loaded like that. Well, you're right with that uh, slap hitter, you know, trying to get toward that ball. And those pitches were pretty well outside. If that stays fair, that's trouble. That is a fair ball. It's going to go almost all the way to the corner. And Chelsea Parker has got her first hit of the night. A good job by Nash of getting that ball in, though. Yeah. And this should be uh, Jaden Raymer. I think that is number 30 out there. We have a different left fielder or something? No, on uh, the batter. Oh, okay. If she could if she could turn a little bit. No, that is 30. Yep. So it is uh, Jaden Raymer. Well, when you deal with uh, long hair and... Uh, Numbers that are hard to read, you got a tough time there. Well, the fortunate thing in the case of Raymer, if she steps back into that sun, we can finally read yeah. the number. Yeah. 
Because I actually can't read any of the yeah. numbers here. Well, Kevin right. Harden and Steve Shaw both trying to read them up here in the press box, and all three of us are kind of guessing at them. 2-1 pitch. Misses. 3-1. Three-one pitch, no outs. We're in the top of the sixth. That's two runners on board now. One via the hit, one via the walk. One thing about it is, and this should be number forty-two. For Harrison, number forty-two, Ava Mobley. I'm sorry, Perry. Go ahead. One thing about it is, Brad. You know what? This is. Probably third or fourth inning that doubles those walk the first batter. And you just cannot do that in softball. Mobley fouls that one back off to the right. Well, that helped. She's uh, accounted for four of the six runs so far in this game with two well hit balls out of the park. Yeah, she's having a heck of a game. There's one. Oh, oh my. my. Addie Emerson, she thought she had that timed, and uh, it was just barely over her glove. So Mobley gets a base hit. That's her third hit of the year. Yeah, third hit. Does the, the Raiders do score one run? And that'll leave uh, Raymer at third, Mobley at first. And at the plate is Ashley Dunk. She's walked twice and lined back to the pitcher in the fourth inning. We do have a uh, courtesy runner, but we can't tell who it is. Running at first base for the Raiders, number four, Mallory Dewar. Runners on the corner for uh, Harrison here. Oh, and one on dunk. That stays fair. That's going to be trouble. It is a fair ball. Raiders will put one more on the board here. And with no outs, they've got runners on second and third. And that's going to bring up Lamy Schellenbarger. She's a designated player, unless they're changing that. And we do have another pinch runner in there at second for Dunk. But again, we have no idea who it is. At the plate for Harrison, number 14, Lenny Schallenberger. Schallenberger fouls this one off to the right. 0 and 1. Schallenberger has reached on a fielder's choice, an air, and a walk. Right at the left fielder, Nash. Play at the plate? No. And Mallory Deal, the courtesy runner, she scores. That'll be the third run of the uh, sixth inning. And now the Raiders are out ahead nine to nothing. Still one out. So Schellenberger flies out to uh, left field. At the plate for the Raiders, number two, Hannah Ball. It's only the first out here in the top of the sixth. (laughs) 
Right up the middle, there's going to be no play. Addie Emerson tried to get over to her right but could not. Lulu Van Beek had a move to her left, and she couldn't get over there. So once again now, the Raiders have scored again. That's the fourth run of the inning. We're going to call that an infield hit. Fourth hit of the uh, game, or the inning. And Micah Wright steps in. And now the Raiders have a 10 to nothing lead. They've got 12 hits. No batting for Harrison. Number four Harrison number has. Right. This is a good ball team. I mean, no doubt Dick about pitched it. a really good game, but this offense is pretty good too. Popped up to the left side. But you got to think tomorrow. Uh, um, the Millers are on the road playing Franklin Central. Yeah. So pitching, not mm-hmm. that you don't have any pitch counts, but, you know, it's a conference game is what I'm saying. Yep, no doubt. That does make a big difference in the way these teams play. Oh, absolutely. Although with uh, when it comes right down to uh, baseball versus softball, the Softball pitchers got a lot more stamina than the uh, baseball pitchers do. The 0-2 pitch is outside. Right is the seventh batter here in the uh, top of the sixth. That one's hit foul once again. You know, you could really see when Wright stepped into that the slap at that pair, you could see just how a player could get out of the batter's box. Up oh, there. absolutely. I mean, you know. Yeah, and, uh, you know, nothing against Delaney Rundle, but, you know, she I mean, slapped it, it, at two of them and yeah. ended up out of the batter's box twice. And, and your goal when you're slap hitting is get, getting that bat on the ball. Okay? And so that's a lot of things to think about. Yes, it is. Still one and two. We're in the middle of the sixth. Millers are going to need to uh, score at least, at this point, at least one run to extend this game to a seven-inning game. If they can't score in the bottom of the sixth, it'll be a ten-run rule. That one gets away. That bounced in, so that'll be a wild pitch. That'll put Vall at second base. Still only one out. First four batters in this inning have all reached and scored. Wright couldn't get around in time to get to that one. She strikes out swinging. That's the second out of the inning. That'll go back to the top of the order to uh, Whitney Duell. Next up for the Raiders, number 11. Duell has walked, struck out. And grounded out twice. This is her fifth at bat in this game. Fifth at bat in six innings. That's a lot. The minimum number of batters that the Millers have faced in any of these innings is five. Yeah, I mean, they, they've had nine more batters than the Millers. Quickly over to first. Did she get there in time? She did. Third out of the bottom or the top of the sixth. Raiders end up scoring four, making it 10 to nothing. You're watching yeah, Hamilton County Television Sports, Sports brought to you by Logan Street Signs and Banners in Noblesville. Gaylord Electric is the highest performing national contractor of excellence. Since 1984, Gaylord Electric success continues to be built upon the cornerstone of reliable resources and reliable outcomes. Insights fueled by the genuine care for people. Gator Electric, along with Chuck Goodrich, President and CEO, are proud sponsors of Hamilton County Sports. How about Sir Cleverly, looking for someone to help navigate buying and selling homes? Let Sarah Cleverly help you find your home of your dreams. 
Clem's been a resident of Noblesville for 40 years, a Noblesville graduate and invested member of the community. For your next real estate experience, call Clev. 317-695-6114. We're moving into the bottom of the sixth. Raiders with a 10-0 lead. It's do or die for the Millers here if they're going to extend this game. They've got to get at least one run to extend the game. Nevea Nash. Is the batter. Grounded the third her last time up. 2 0 on Nash. Almost the entire field in shadows now. 3 0. Three on the way to Nash. That's going to be a strike called. She thought she had ball four there. Nash steps back in with a 3 1 count. Infield playing in. Does get the walk there, so the leadoff runner, the leadoff batter is on base. That'll bring up Gabby Fowler. This was a big battle the last inning here. Yeah. Between Gabby and Gick. Let's see if we have a repeat performance or. Well, Fowler won the battle even though she didn't, she got a base on a walk. Pop up. Is anybody going to get to it? Just out of the reach of the uh, second baseman, Duvall. And the Millers, with no outs, have got runners on first and second. This is uh, Mac Harvey stepping into the box. Now batting for the Millers, number 27, Mac Harvey. Mac Harvey, ready for her first pitch, fouls it back. Looks like uh, Izzy Zapp has grabbed a bat, loosening up in the on-deck circle. Oh, and one on Harvey. Oh, and two. Update from uh, the dunk. Uh, Noblesville four, Rossville zero. They're in the bottom of the fourth inning. That one's high, makes it one and two. Millers have only had seven base runners, excuse me, six base runners in this game. Three of those came in the last inning. First base runner they had was two outs in the fourth. First and second batters here in the sixth have reached on a walk and a single. 0 oh and 2. That one's popped up. Wright is back. She's got it. Nice base running job there. 
and they're saying she left early. So there are now two outs. As they're saying, Nevaeh Nash, who tried to advance on that fly ball, they're saying she left early. They appeal it over to second base, and they get the call. So, so Nash is two outs. the second out. Harvey is the first out on the fly out to left field. And this is uh, number 17, number Izzy number Zapp. Number 17, Izzy Zapp. Tough situation for the Millers there, Perry, trying to get something on the board and just a little bit of a mental error, just left a fraction of a second early. Miller still with a runner on first, but two outs, a one and two strike, one ball, two strikes. Another foul ball. Make that count one and one on Izzy Izzo. Izzo. Izzy Zap, excuse me. Two down, bottom of the sixth. Ground ball, third baseman knocks it down. Will they get the play? No, not in time. That'll be a base hit for Izzy Zapp. So Zapp will be on first. Brad, for those women basketball fans, a, a surprise, the Indiana Fever picked Caitlin Clark as their first choice. Oh, gosh, I'm going to faint. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, dear. Oh, that'll be a great acquisition for the Fever. Yeah, that's breaking news there. Caitlin Clark is going to be a member of the Indiana Fever. The 0-1, 0-2. Mac Jackway. Trying to keep this uh, inning alive. That makes it one and two. A ball and two strikes. The Millers trying to extend this game. They need a run here to keep it going. Strike three. The game is over. Final score. Lafayette Harrison 10, no, Noblesville Millers 0. Perry, your it's thoughts on the game? Well, the Millers uh, the Millers battled, but the one thing about it, Geck and Harrison Mobley was just Harrison. way too much. And that entire Harrison team, Thank even though Geck pitched a, a great game, uh, she sure played did. they had 12, 13 hits, so. You know, it's a great ball game. Well, we'd like to thank our uh, technical crew tonight. Make sure I get this right now. I believe we have August Lacone on the camera. Our executive producer, director Jim Wofford. My partner, Perry Williams. We'd like to thank you for watching tonight's broadcast of IHSAA Girls Softball on Hamilton County Television. Presented by Logan Street Signs and Banners, celebrating over 30 years in business. We'd also like to thank the other great sponsors, Noblesville Trophies. Gaylor Electric, Chuck Goodrich, President and CEO. Community Health Network, visit HamiltonCounty.com. Hamilton County Sports Authority, Blades, Audio, Video, and Security. The Hamilton County Reporter, Sarah Cleverly of FC Tucker Real Estate in the Noblesville Youth Sports Alliance. On behalf of Perry Williams, I'm Brad Silbert. Good night from Noblesville.